Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Diego with the beautiful Karina, my lovely Prometida. And we are waiting for our K-1 visa to get adjudicated at the service center in California, USA. California, Surf City on the West Coast. I live in uh, the Panhandle of Florida, near Pensacola, north of Navarre Beach. And Navarre Beach is where we're going to get married. And Karina is from Caracas, Venezuela, beautiful Venezuela. And she is a legal resident of Bogota, Colombia, way up in the Andes Mountains, where she's the manager, the FA, the boss of a couple of uh, ice cream stores. And she's also into tax accounting. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is about K-1 visas and the embassy processing at the U.S. Embassy and Consulate in Vietnam, or officially called the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. And this is an interesting video, ladies and gentlemen, with important information. Come on along! Now, the beautiful country of Vietnam is located at the eastern edge of the mainland of Southeast Asia, with an area of 127,882 square miles. Now, I don't work in kilometers because I live in the United States and I have no idea what a kilometer is. So, if you want it in kilometers, you're going to have to convert it because I don't know how to do that. Now, Vietnam has a population of 99 million people, making it the world's 15th most populous country. Okay? And Vietnam borders communist China to the north. Laos and Cambodia to the west, and it shares the maritime borders with Thailand through the Gulf of Thailand and the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia through the, Ch the South China Sea. And uh, so it's, it's near lots of water and lots of friendly people. A beautiful country, uh, Vietnam. The capital city of Vietnam is Hanoi, and its largest city is Ho Chi Minh City, or normally it's referred to as Saigon. Now the combined length of the country's land boundaries with all of its friendly neighbors is 2,883 miles. Ooh, that's a long way. And it has a coastline of 2,140 miles. So that's a lot of beaches. And that's a lot of places to go fishing. Now, at its narrow, narrowest point, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, the narrowest point in Vietnam is the central Kang Bin province, uh, and it's only 31 miles across. Woo! So you could probably walk across that peninsula from ocean to ocean, okay, from sea to sea. Uh, though it does widen up to 370 miles, okay, as you go further north. Now, Vietnam's land is mostly hilly and uh, densely forested with level land covering only about 20% of the whole country. So it's pretty hilly. It's like Colombia. The mountains in Vietnam account for 40% of the country's land area and has tropical forests which cover around 42% of the land area. The Red River Delta in the north is a flat, roughly triangular region uh, covering 5,792 square miles. Uh, it's smaller but more intensely developed and more densely populated than the Mekong River Delta in the south. Now, northern Vietnam, inclu including Hanoi, is subtropical, has a subtropical climate with a Köppen climate classification, and at times has been influenced by the cold waves that blow in from the northeast. Now, the northern part of central Vietnam uh, also has times to be influenced by these cold waves also, and the southern part of central Vietnam and southern Vietnam, well basically they're just hot all year round. Ooh, you're going to sweat all year round in southern Vietnam. Throughout the history of uh, Vietnam, the economy has primarily been based on, on agriculture and primarily wet rice cultivation, okay? And also there is bauxite, which is mined uh, in in uh, central Vietnam, which is a material that is used in the production of aluminum. So if you're using aluminum in your house, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, or in your car, it may have been mined in, in, uh, in central Vietnam. Uh, as a result of several land reform measures by the, uh, the government, Vietnam has also become a major exporter of agricultural products which is good. We want to see free market capitalism flowing in 
socialist Vietnam. You know, that's just my opinion. People get rich when you're in a capitalist society and they live a you know, more productive life. My opinion. Now, Vietnam is the world's largest producer of cashew nuts with one third of the global share. How about that? And, the la and Vietnam is also the largest producer of black pepper, accounting for one third of the world's market. Well, that's excellent. You guys have got control of the cashew and the black pepper market. How about that? And Vietnam is the second uh, largest rice exporter in the world after Thailand. So apparently Thailand is the number one exporter of rice in the world. Uh, so, you know, subsequently Vietnam is also the world's second largest exporter of coffee. So Colombia, you need to be paying attention, guys. <laughs> Vietnam is going to be beating you soon. Tourism is very important in Vietnam, and Vietnam hosted roughly 13 million tourists in 2017 using this data, an increase of 29.1% over the previous year. So tourism's going up, and I guess COVID shut it down, but I'm sure that, I'm sure the numbers are going back up again, making it the fastest growing tourist destination in the world. That's good. The vast majority of tourists, uh, you know, in the country come from Asia, so they come from China, South Korea, and Japan, and Vietnam also attracts a large number of visitors from Europe, you know, mostly from Russia, and from the United Kingdom, and France, and Germany, and also from the United States also, and also from Australia. So those are the main touristy persons that come visit Vietnam. So you're processing your K-1 visa in Vietnam, and you want to know, how am I going to fly to the United States? Well, Vietnam operates 20 major civil airports, including three international gateways, which is Noi, ba Noi Bai in Hanoi, Da Nang International Airport in Da Nang, and Tan Son Nat in Ho Chi Minh City. So there are three international airports that you can use for Vietnam. Right? Now, according to a government-approved plan, so because the government controls everything in Vietnam, it's not private, everything's ran by the government, uh, Vietnam will have another seven international airports by 2025. So they're planning ahead for more tourists, I'm assuming. Uh, the, la the national language of, of the country is Vietnamese, a tonal uh, Austro-Asiatic language called Mon Khmer, uh, which is spoken by, by the majority of the population. Now, it's early history. Vietnamese writings used to, they used Chinese characters called Chu Han, okay, and before a different meaning set of Chinese characters was created called Chu Nam. And this was developed between the 7th and 13th century. So, so Vietnam's language goes back a long way, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Very historic, very interesting indeed. Now, in, Ch in, in China, in, in Vietnam, okay, let's talk about food. My favorite subject. Diego's favorite subject is food. Now, traditionally, Vietnamese cuisine is based around five fundamental taste elements, okay? Vietnamese is gu vi, is what it's called. Spicy, which is metal. Sour, which is called wood. Bitter, which is called fire. Salty, which is called water. And sweet, which is called earth. And common ingredients include fish, uh, fish sauce, shrimp paste, soy sauce, uh, rice, fresh herbs, fruits, and vegetables. And Vietnamese recipes use uh, lemongrass, ginger, mint, uh, Vietnamese mint, uh, long coriander, Saigon cinnamon, bird's eye chili, lime, and basil leaves. So it sounds like a very, very, very healthy uh, diet in, in uh, Vietnam. They, the food is just very good for your body. So traditional Vietnamese cooking, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is known for its fresh ingredients the minimal use of oil, and a reliance on herbs and vegetables. It is considered one of the healthiest cuisines in the whole world. Man, I'm going to have, maybe Karina and I, we're going to have to take a vacation to, uh, to Vietnam and check out some of this good food. Uh, the use of meats such as pork, beef, and chicken was relatively limited in the past, so they don't eat much meat, primarily herbs and vegetables. And, in, and, and they prefer, you know, freshwater fish, uh, crabs, mollusks, etc., which are popular. So they're more into into seafood, okay? 
Fish sauce, soy sauce, prawn sauce, and limes are among the main flavoring ingredients. Okay? And Vietnam also has a strong food culture from the street. They love their street food. I remember the street food in Egypt when I was in Alexandria. And I remember the street food of Bogota, Colombia. Ooh, I love street food. And Vietnam has 40 popular dishes, pop common dishes, uh, throughout the country, which is from street food. Now let's talk about the U.S. Embassy in Vietnam and K-1 visas, and also very important information regarding visa processing at the U.S. Embassy and Consulates in Vietnam. Now, in fiscal year 2022, 606 K-1 visas were approved by the U.S. State Department in the Consulate and the Embassy in Vietnam. Okay? But listen up. This is very important information for folks processing visas. Okay? Listen up. Big, you know, in October 2022 to October 3rd, 2022, last year, all visa applicants with the new blue covered passports must have the passport endorsed with the place of birth of your place of birth before your interview. So if you are a beneficiary in Vietnam with a with a blue covered passport, okay, you must have your place of birth endorsed in there somewhere, okay, by the I'm sure by the Vietnamese government. If you do not have your endorsement in the blue covered passport, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you will not be permitted to interview and you will have to reschedule your appointment in the, at the embassy. Okay, this is pertaining to Vietnam. Now there's more important information, guys. Beginning April 12th of last year, 2022, which is about, you know, a, almost a year ago, the U.S. Consulate General in Ho Chi Minh City will turn away immigrant visa applicants who have not brought all of their required documents with them to their interview. Okay, and if you have not uploaded all of your required documents into the SEAC system, so you got to make sure you upload everything to the SEAC system. That's primarily for spousal visas. And, uh, or you'll be turned away, okay? And you will have to reschedule your interview. And you will have to get a new interview if the cover sheet has not been completed. So I don't know if that pertains to K-1 visas also. I believe it does. So you've got to have your cover sheet filled out too. You must make sure that you have uploaded all the documents to the SEAC. And you must bring to your interview all of the original original and certified copies of documents that match the documents you uploaded to the SEAC. So that pertains to primarily to the to the spousal visas, not the K-1 visas. Okay, And all applicants who have not completed their medical exam and, and uh, haven't brought their information sheet with them from their doctor, f approved by the embassy, uh, you will also be turned away. Okay, So make sure you cover that stuff. The U.S. Embassy in uh, in Vietnam is located right here okay that's the address to the US Embassy and their phone number is right here so that's for contact information ladies and gentlemen boys and girls you will get your K-1 visa and your K-2 visas for the kiddies you will get it we're gonna pull you over the finish line we're gonna pull you over the finish line you just gotta be patient follow the rules follow directions don't make mistakes okay you can't be you can't get away with something if it's not in the USCIS rule book you can't do it and if you watch all of our videos we're gonna get you through this scary interview process okay guys hang in there and we'll see you soon in the United States flying on an airplane landing somewhere in America thanks for watching and don't forget boys and girls ladies and gentlemen Every Sunday at 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Central Time, live with Diego on YouTube. So I can answer your questions live. Every Sunday, 5 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Miami Time. I'll be back.